Per venire a noi, a questo dibattito odierno, noi qui abbiamo eh, accanto a me, oltre a Kengoku, Macino Zucchi. Sono due architetti molto noti, credo a tutti, hanno la stessa età, sono nati nello stesso anno, hanno formazioni molto diverse e per chi conosce il loro lavoro ci sono apparenti similitudini ma anche apparenti asimmetrie. E questo credo che sia l'elemento più interessante che oggi potremo in qualche modo vedere dal loro racconto, dalle loro parole. Stamattina si ragionava sull'aspetto organico dell'architettura di Cuma ma anche sul rapporto con l'ambiente, il rapporto con i materiali, il rapporto con la natura. Per l'opera di Cino molto spesso invece è il rapporto con la città, con degli elementi della storia, con il costruito, che in qualche modo alimentano le loro architetture. Quindi spesso e volentieri anche ambienti molto diversi, però molto spesso anche alcuni punti di grande contatto, di grande convergenza. A me piace ricordare due eh, progetti apparentemente molto diversi, che sono per certi versi invece accomunati da alcuni aspetti di filosofia, mi piacerebbe sentirne parlare da loro. Un, progetto per un piccolo padiglione in un bosco, che ricordavo stamattina, eh, realizzato da Kengo Kuma, eh, si chiama Pepper Snake, ed è una sorta di serpente, una superficie rigata che si snoda nella foresta, e un altro progetto per l'allestimento di una sistemazione prima del viadotto di Cassarate a Lugano, eh, fatto da Cino Zucchi. Entrambi si relazionano con l'ambiente, entrambi usano materiali per certi versi eh, tradizionali e nuovi nello stesso tempo ma poi alcuni elementi di contatto mi sembra di leggere in alcuni progetti eh, che si misurano nell'ambiente naturale eh, il progetto per la saleva di Cino Zucchi quasi come un masso erratico i progetti per Porta Susa per la, eh, da parte di Kengo Kuma allora queste come dire, apparenti vicinanze dal punto di vista del rapporto e della lettura del paesaggio sono in qualche modo oggi qui sul tappeto di questo possibile dialogo. Eh, io lascerò eh, la parola prima a Kengo Kuma che illustrerà un po' il suo pensiero e poi replicherà Cino Zucchi e poi mi auguro che il dibattito sia di interesse per tutti voi. Grazie. Today, uh, I want to think with you about what is the strongness of the architecture in 21st century. I want to start uh, from this image. As a, do you remember as a, this, as a disaster? This happened two years ago in Japan, up north Japan. And as a, I, I was so shocked as a, to visit that place two weeks after the disaster. And I, I took this picture by myself. And, uh, and uh, the, I found the, the strong architecture in 20th century is a concrete building, steel building, the, which were, were built on the waterfront on this area, was all devastated, all gone by tsunami. But I took these pictures from the small village just besides so this area, As a, the, because the village was not devastated at all. The wooden building, the small wooden buildings were very strong. And why? Because the people who are living in that area knows what is the strongness. They know the, the small hill is very safe and they know the elevation. They only built the house on that level. And so that is their wisdom. But in 20th century, people built the building, concrete building, just beside waterfront, ocean front. Those mm, so-called strong building was not strong at all, all gone. And the, I began to think, what is the real strongness of architectures? That Real strongness can come from the wisdom of the place. 
and that we, and uh, that those wisdom is is for example using local material and natural material working with craftsmen local craftsmen as a, those as a as a as kind of design as a can create real strongness in 21st century and i want to explain this project so this is my project and actually this is a building was in the same place in the same city ishinomaki city and as a fortunately my building was not destroyed as because of the location and there's uh, one reason because of designs or uh, uh, this building is melting in nature and <clears throat> this is a part of the nature and this is Kitakan Canal Museum and this canal is very famous in Japan it's a very very old canal and uh, this is a river and the building is uh, one third of the building is on the hill but the two third is buried and this is Kitakam River, so this is Kitakam city, and the building is between river and the city. And uh, it is actually difficult to find the building because the building is almost <laughs> as melting in nature. But uh, so what I want to do for this building is, is that kind of relationship. And if there, is, there exists respect to nature as a building as a, is strong, but if the building is arrogant and uh, it cannot survive from that kind of disaster. And the uh, next example is, is the Hiroshige Museum. As a, it's also as a, uh, as a built in up north area, but it also the building was, was saved. And uh, what I did for this building is to use local material as possible as can. The, the roof is made by the sticks of cedar and the wall is also made by a stick of cedar. And uh, that came from the mountain just behind the building. And the Japanese carpenters is saying the, the best material for the building is the, from the mountain behind the building. As I followed that as a idea. And and another the, the point I want to the, emphasize is this shrine and mountain. And this is a typical structure of Japanese village. This is the center of the village. And this always the village sit just next to the mountain. And this mountain is called this village mountain so because the material of the building came from the mountain. The energy that they need all came from the mountain. And uh, fertilizer for farming, agriculture came from the mountain. And they could not live without mountain. And then they respected mountain very much. And then they built shrine. This is a symbol of their respect. And uh, this is a strong message. If we destroy the mountain, so, so we cannot live anymore. This is a strong message of this uh, line. But in 20th century, they forget that important message. So in 20th century, this is Tokyo. Everybody watching Tokyo. So, and material, as, as came from Tokyo, energy came from Tokyo, and everything came from Tokyo. And they, they ignored the mountain, they abandoned mountain. And, the, and that, I think that is the, the real weakness of the village. And the, 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 my building is, has a, is a hole which penetrates, uh, this hole is directing the shrine. And this is message. Please remember shrine again. Please remember the mountain again. And then I use uh, local material as possible as can. And uh, I want to sh show the interior. It is the papers, as a, as a classman of the village made this wall. 
and the stone is, is not from China. The stone is, is, uh, came from the, uh, the quarry just next to the village. So I want to uh, create the. I want to create the, this kind of relationship with the village. And the next project is Adobe. Adobe is not the software. Adobe is <laughs> this. <laughs> and the, the, in this village, I found this small the, the house made by a special technique. As a, also, I found this special wall. But they forgot that the construction method. The, I, I worked with craftsmen there, and uh, this is the result. The material is the site itself, and, the, and the, if we transport something from outside, from the city, the, the we need transportation, cost, energy, and, but in this building, we use the, the land site itself. And this is the contents of this small museum. And the good thing for this material is material can control humidity and temperature. And this is one of the national treasure of Japan. But in this building, no air conditioning. The material itself can control humidity and temperature. And the next material is bamboo. The bamboo is also a very important local material. There's one experimental house in Japan this is structure. So we used the bamboo as a, for the formwork to as a, as a put concrete inside the bamboo into bamboo, and, uh, so, and this is a first bamboo house. Uh, the priest forget neighbors, <laughs> and uh, this is a second floor. The floor, partition, ceiling. It's all made by bamboo. And the second bamboo house is in China. So you know this landscape? This is Great Wall in China. And the, so Great Wall is a big lesson. The Great Wall is following the landscape. They don't destroy the lands, beautiful landscape. This house is also following the landscape. We didn't cut the land. And the material, of course, this, uh, this is great wall. The material, of course, is, uh, is, uh, it is not expensive at all. Bamboo is very, very cheap in, in Japan, China. And so this is uh, uh, the, uh, the center of the house. Uh, this is most important space. This is, a, the, we call it void. The void is to create the close relationship with nature, and uh, also the, the people uh, the, like to drink tea here. And next is uh, those, uh, those one episode start from Italy, close from here. Uh, you know this is a space, uh, Castello uh, Sol uh, Cesco. <laughs> so, so I designed a temporary pavilion here. The hint is this traditional toy. And this toy, is a, is a, is the, the system is very smart. And without any glue or any the nail, or, and, as a, they can fix this, the three bars, three sticks. And uh, we brought those sticks from Tokyo. The, our student the, could make it in three days. And the after the, the finishing this the exhibition, the we, we, could, the broad, we could bring back those bars to Japan. And next, my next dream is to achieve the permanent building by the use of this system. And, the, and this is the sections. And our structural engineers the calculated the dimension the necessary dimension of this bar, six centimeter by six centimeters, and length is 1.5 meter. And this is the result. This is interior. And actually, is a, there is a, the glass which separates exterior and interior. 
This is an entrance. The next step is to make a bridge. Uh, for bridge, we need the bigger as a member, big, bigger as a sticks. And uh, so, as we we as a propose to use this bridge for small museum because this is covered. And next is uh, next steps is as uh, a more for more um, unique client is a Starbucks. <laughs> the location is very unique. The Tenmangu is one of the major shrine in Japan. The shrine is here, just in front of the shrine. So our proposal is. Starbucks is coming from America, but our proposal is this is a major shrine and we should use the Japanese technique. But as a little bit as a, as a contemporary technique. This is not decoration. This is the structures of this small building. This is the structure system. And the, the total length of this wooden sticks is 4,000 meters for, for this small building. And uh, in Tokyo, uh, we also uh, try to uh, so regenerate so some kind of so, the strongness. The location is uh, also very close to this old building. As a, as a, we call it a Japanese galleria, as a shrine and the gate, and our building is just here. This is our proposal. The wooden houses in Tokyo used to be the, as a basic element of the city. As a, as a human scale of the city came from the wooden house. And the, the element of this building is seven wooden houses and made by wood. And this is a section. And so in each floor, the people can feel, I'm sitting on the ground. And also, for, so we can maximize the ceiling height, and we can utilize the space between floor and roof. And then this is a very, and as a, as a uh, the functional approach, but at the same time, the building is very warm and soft. This is the top floor. And the next example is a Nagaoka City Hall, Town Hall building. As a <clears throat> it is, is uh, not as, as a small building, uh, but as a, for us, the most important thing for this building is this doma space. And uh, this kind of space in the traditional house was called doma. Uh, do means earth. As a ma means a space. Earth space is a meaning. And uh, the, uh, this is a, is a multifunctional space. And uh, farmers were working here even in rainy day, and this is a, com as a public space, people are gathering here, and drinking here, eating here, cooking here. But the, oh, again, the, the now they forgot this kind of space. But I think this space is, was very, very important for, for the life. And that the space we propose for this town hall is like that. The most of the town hall in 20th century was built outside of the city, in the parking, the concrete isolated building in the parking. People don't want to go there. But this is a very, this is, is, the mayors of the city decided to build in the center. And then eventually people are, are gathering in this Doma space. As a, it's more than I expected. Every night, the people are coming to this space as a, because they like that kind of warmness of the earth. And then the floor is covered by the earth, and the material came from the, 
and the, 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 the neighbors, and we decided, made the rule. The most of the material should come from maximum 15 kilometers from this site, from this building. And this is, a, and also we combined contemporary technology, the computer controlled photovoltaic panels. And this is a space for NPO. And this is an assembly hall. As a, as a, as a I, my idea is polit politics should be transparent. <laughs> and we designed this space just next to Doma space. And this is a <clears throat> the material, rice, rice papers we use for this building. This is a wall, rice paper wall and the earth. And for this kind of building, to use those natural material is not easy, it's because they are, they are worrying about the maintenance. And but so we combine the, some special technique the, to make it strong. And this is also made by rice paper. This is so far, so, but the material is paper. As a, the, the secret is to the treat with parchment parsimon juice. In Italy, you have parsimon trees, but parsimon juice as can be used for this kind of as a purpose. And this material is used for for this. And the next as a, as a museum is also as a, as a designed as a, according to the Doma idea. And those are the the houses, so, so we got a hint from those houses with roofs. And the big, as a totally, it has a big volume, but we divide it into small houses, and we have the domar in the center. This is a central space. And this is the annex of this museum. This is a studio. And the element is very simple. This is the structures of the roof. And the, anybody can construct this roof by themselves. And this is a system. It is like toy. And expansion is very easy by the use of this system. And in China, so we are also interested in to use local material to work with craftsmen. For this museum in, in the very west of China, I use a ceramic tile. So, and I found a very interesting ceramic tile. It is not made by the factory, big factory. They are making those ceramic tile by themselves. And then the size is different and the color is different. But I like that that kind of the, uh, the non-standard material. And please look at those colors. And, but we suspended this ceramic tile by, by stainless wire. The local material and very contemporary technology. And to control natural light is the purpose of this is this facade. This is, uh, this is another make tiles uh, to control natural light. And in, in Europe, the, we are designing the same, the similar as a, as a idea. This is as our first French project. It is in Besançon. Uh, it is close from Swiss, and we use local larch for the facade and also for the structures of the building. And in the centers, we design void. This void is also to communicate nature and the city, and also it's a kind of doma space in Europe. This is a void. Uh, this is a doma space in Europe. Uh, this is an interface uh, between the building and the city. We designed this section to also make the harmony between city and the building. 
And the second French project is Frac Marseille. It is a, is a museum, contemporary museum foundation. And we walked the city of Marseille and found this material. It is a special glass to control natural light. And this detail can give lightness and softness to the building. So the effect of light is very important for this project. I got a hint from Shoji screens for this project. And the next Spanish project is, um, is because of the Spanish economy, this, is a, this project is very slow. The hint is these fruits. The, you know Granada as it came from pomegranate, pomegranate. The, and also in Japan, the, I like these fruits very much. And another hint for this project is uh, Alhambra Palace, the geometry of Alhambra Palace. It's not the perpendicular geometry. And the, this is the flutes we designed for the city. <laughs> and uh, we, we, the structure engineer and, and, and the, me are working together as a, to have the honeycomb structures for this building. And hex as a hexagonal as the geometry are creating the strong structure without any column and beam. And the, even in interior, the, the audience can feel the structure of the building. And the next uh, the project is the VNA at Dandy Scotland. Uh, the hint is a cliff. And the cliff is between land and waters. And the land and waters are sometimes fighting, sometimes as a peaceful, as a, but the, the, this shape is a, is a result of their as a, as a beautiful relationship. And the site is in, in, the, in the river. As a, in this kind of site, as I think, the, as a square box cannot fit. And the, we the designed many void the, to invite people to the building and to create as a communication between nature and city. And this big foyer is, uh, is used for the theaters as, a, as some performance and concert. And the last project I show you today is very much related as a, to this space, Triennale building. <laughs> as a, uh, it's uh, six, seven years ago, as a, as a, you did the exhibition, the titles Casa de Tutto, uh -huh. House for Everybody. But uh, in Japanese, the casa means umbrella. <laughs> and casa de tutto, suddenly I, I got the idea. Oh, umbrella house. <laughs> and the, but it's not just a joke. The, the purpose of this house is if some disaster happened, the, this kind of umbrella can work very well. The 15 umbrella can come together. This can the build the one house, the kind of refugee house. And we designed this umbrella. <laughs> Very special umbrella uh, with, uh, with some addition. Uh, and the 15 st student uh, uh, gathered in the, in the garden in front of this building. And so this is the result. And this is the Kiriko's sculptures. <laughs> and this is an insight. And uh, probably architecture student knows the Bagmi star flowers flood dome system. And the flood dome system is basically the flame structure. The flame is supporting the dome. But this is a casa umbrella. <coughs> Was hinted from the flua, but structurally a little bit different. So for these structures, the, the membrane and the flame are working together. And then as eventually we can decrease the size of the flame. The flame is so thin 
and uh, the, because the membrane, tension of the membrane is supporting the building. And another good thing is that uh, we have the windows, as you remember the triangular the, the pieces the, uh, that can work to introduce light and the wind. And after the completion, the student drink, eat, <laughs> and stay here. And uh, this is uh, my as a, as a, as a happy memory with this building, the Triennale building. And uh, through those uh, exercises, as I want to find the new type, new kind of strongness. So that kind of strongness is not same as a strongness of a concrete building, not the, the big concrete building. And the small soft element, small natural element, can create the new kind of strongness. So that is the, the, the theme of my practice. Thank you very much. Some days ago, an American friend came um, to dinner with me, and he would just uh, have been to Japan in the birthplace of Okuzai, the famous painter. And he showed me these pictures, and he described how fascinated he was by the display of homegrown apples. And I said, the Japanese can show an apple in such a beautiful way. He was showing these local markets and the way things, chestnuts or apples, were displayed. So this idea of truth and bareness, I don't know, there's, there's also a word in Japanese about it, that uh, Okuzai, in a way, was the breaking point for the Westerners to understand there was another way of looking at nature in an abstract way. You know, think about how Japan culture worked as a kind of um, lever for modernism in, in, in our countries. But maybe, being a little bit of a Catholic origin, where um, you have some kind of double thought, <laughs> because Catholics are always a little bit double, and the question of truth and pomp and ornament, it's a more complex one, I maybe see the same thing from another point of view. So, every human act is, has to do something with the material and the form, but I was wondering whether this uh, material and form could yield something else with what we call ornament. So I tried to read through some architectures I did, going back to something I studied in school, which was the principle of cladding. In Italy it would be il principio del rivestimento, and I'll explain later what I'm talking about. So I was saying that we always are a little bit violent with nature. We always like to take change, chainsaw and cut trees or m make funny shapes out of them. And, you know, we like materials, but we don't also like to give to material shapes, and somehow using their own inner grain. Sometimes we are wonderfully taking meat out of the stone. This is a famous Bernini statue. So in a way, we push the material all the way and with some kind of sensuality in this case. And architecture has always been something in between. It's always somehow relating to natural um, you know, elements. This is, I think, is Angkor Wat. But also the molding is a way of an applied form which has to do with material but is not contained in it. So the dialectic between, say, form and as an abstract matter, this is almost like Escher or Piranesi, and material is, to me, is the substance of architecture. And of course, architecture is sometimes, uh, you know, vi violating nature, imposing forms to nature, and nature is sort of avenging on taking it back. You know, something, there's a, there's a, if you leave a building long enough, it will go back eventually to nature. But you know, we strive for truth, but in a way we cannot completely say what is the exact form of a material. This is the famous Miss van der Rohe, you know, National Gallery in Berlin, but that's the Bacardi uh, building. So in a way, uh, there's still a, a gap or a dilemma. You know, even when we are looking for truth, somehow we still have a degree of freedom about, you know, what form is the right form for a material. But then, um, there's another um, way, another path, I would say. And 
somehow around the second half of the 18th century, Gottfried Semper, he was a theoretician, wrote a book, Der Stil, and he was trying to connect architecture to four um, uh, techniques, uh, you know, uh, carpentry, uh, wall making, uh, ferramenta, like um, iron making and, and te textile. And in German, the word Wand means uh, wall, but Gewand means uh, knitting or um, textile. So basically, what he was saying, that before um, constructing things, we are delimiting space. So he pointed out how, in a way, the delimitation of space, you know, there's some, in some Kurosawa um, films, you have these camps made just with putting uh, some textile around. So the, the act of making a precinct is before piling things up. So he was remembering us, we built for space first and then we tried to keep it up. And some years later, Adolf Loss, the famous Austrian um, um, things, he wrote an article which called Das Prinzip der Kleidung, the principle of cladding, going back to Gottfried Semper. And he was recalling this thing. And I took this funny quote. He says, can we paint wood? He say, yes, of course we can paint wood. But we should not simulate you know, with paint what's under. So we can paint wood every color beside fake wood, as the stockings of a ballerina can be any color beside slash color. So in the moment you make a surface, you can play with it. You know, surface means decoration. There's a famous biologist called Adolf Portman. He says, in the moment where uh, in like jellyfishes on fishes, the skin becomes opaque, it becomes to be a, an exchange with the exterior, some kind of surface you can represent things. So we tried to play it with stockings. This is a, a pavilion we did in the Biennale. In this case, the decoration is made by the light. But today, you know, in a way, the modern movement always look for truth, showing the skeleton, the sort of skin and bones. Something like the, the, the truth for the modern movement was showing the structure. Today, for climatic reasons, we understand for many technical issues that we go back to the skin and the skin is doing many things. You know, the skin is more and more in buildings and in dresses made of layers. Some layers just protect from the wind, some insulate, some make comfort. So in a, in a way, the way the depth of, 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 a, of a building skin is getting more and more complex, more analytical, is the same way somehow in, like in, in. So, some years ago, we won this competition for the Saleva. Saleva, they do uh, mountainy clothing. Uh, Reynold Mesner was in the jury, and this was their headquarters in Bolzano. It was basically a big logistic point. And uh, we did uh, the biggest rock climbing school. This has become a very successful place because we have a bar. People go there and drinking. So it's a double-faced building. This is, to say, the city side where you enter the building. And the office side, you have a showroom, you have this. And then this is the highway side where you just have a gigantic automatic uh, magazine or a warehouse with no light at all. So it's totally automatic. So it's, it's no production. It's just offices and uh, this is the entrance of the trucks. And, but also Bolzano has one of the biggest industrial zones, but also has very nice mountains around it. So as, as a tiger somehow camouflages in, 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 in the you know, things. Then I took this picture from the other side. I was very, very proud of the color we chose. Uh, the owner said, but this is the color of the 2008, 2009 collection. You know, now we, we wear brown. I said, okay, but you know, building is not just a brand building. It's just for the landscape. So it's not the color of the grass. It's the color of when Bolzano gets quite uh, um, uh, wet and damp, damp in the summer. So basically when you get this sort of blue, almost like Vergine delle Rocce painting by Leonardo da Vinci, where you have a, what is called a aerial perspective, you see a bluish shade and that's the color of the building, but there's also a landmark, so somehow follows the contours of them. And many years ago, I don't know if they tell it, when we went to, the, to local fairs, we bought these statues with this sort of powder and this would change color to tell the weather. So it became pink when the weather was damp and blue when it was hot. So you could look at these things and tell the weather before waking up. up. 
And you know, and if you go to Times Square, architecture is just some LED lights. But in a way, Monet, Monet understood um, that architecture has to be still because it's like an amplifier of the weather. It's like a sundial. You know, uh, maybe it has to be white because it's the sun coloring architecture. So, can we somehow amplify the weather? This is an office building near next to Milano. Is next to the. It's a little bit in in a park, so it's no urban context. And of course, you have all this reasoning about energy conservation and shadow. But for real, of course, these elements are quite functional. Uh, what is strange when you look at this building that it changes very, very much with the weather. When the, the, the sun is dark, it's sort of gloomy, and then it shines w when the sun comes out. It's a little bit like a tree reacting to light. Just to go, can we do reclam architecture but also somehow be urban? I don't know what urban, we have this notion of urbanity, which is a quite a complex one, this is both sociological. This is a Benetton shop in a street in uh, Bruxelles. We did, you know, they needed a reclam facade. You know, in a way, ju we just did a facade, you know, going back to this integrity. But somehow, we try to do both some kind of shop windows and also some kind of something which has a kind of dignity. The, uh, the question of showing off or restraining is a complex one in urban situation. I just go very quickly. I don't want to explain the project. I just go through this idea of the surface. This is the competition for the Lavazza headquarters we're doing in Torino, which is a quite strong um, alteration of uh, an existing. We, we're keeping to historical buildings, so we have this new headquarters, the square, and this is a church we built in Sesto San Giovanni, which is a quite workers' neighborhood, so it's a tough church. So, um, there's some kind of game between the volume and the surface which has to do with architecture. Of course, if you do too much polychromy, you can destroy the volume. So it's, it's a risky, you know, what is the point? You just get to decoration, of course. This is the car museum in Torino, which is an addition to an existing building. This was an existing building. And this is a quiet. Of course, I'm not talking about the urban, the urbanistics of it. We, we are doing a lot of public spaces. So for us, I'm talking a bit formalistically about projects who have a lot of relationship with the city because, you know. I'm In this case, this skin has all the, the safety stairs inside, but also. Uh, wraps around existing building. This is a court, it was an existing court we covered and we made into a, a home. And, you know, in Italy, many times you have a very prosaic theme. This is the cheapest building I, I built, is a, is a workers' housing, very, very cheap in Ravenna, and it was just in the, in the, in the industrial zone. So it's just one residential building along a canal, but it's like a harbor, it's the Darsena di Ravenna. And we had so little money, we, you know, Ravenna have all these mosaics, and we said we just play with the color of the plaster. This is a capotto plaster, the overcoat housing. Just to say that, you know, in this case it's more decorative, but I think uh, you need some kind of interface between the idea of the privacy, the, in dwellings you have some kind of intimacy, but also some kind of urbanity. So I think the screen is a good device to keep together the feeling of privacy and the feeling of urbanity. To give the maximum, you know, this is a housing in Bologna, we're just finishing up. So can you be both very comfortable and very urban? That, that's the question, you know, not always these two things go very well together. So the, max, the, the maximization of the private it could create just a, a, a suburb, you know. And so we're trying to rediscover density, I think, also in ecological terms. A, a dweller of the inner city consumes half of the energy of a dweller of the suburbs. This is a building, actually we're opening it tomorrow night in Milano, it's in the highs, it's a competition one. Uh, this is just a photograph from yesterday. We, we, tomorrow night we, uh, we have the, the opening. And again, it's a building who has a very nice garden. It's, it's an urban building who tries to put together urbanity and also some kind of high environmental quality, I would say. And 
you know, in a master plan in, uh, in Pasila, in Helsinki, where the, f the Finnish are very, very ecological, they ask for an incredible density next to the station because of ecological reason. And then they ask to make a master plan, but also to give some samples of their, what architecture could look like. They wanted high density, but they were afraid of skyscrapers at the same time. So I'd say, Chinozuki, can you, can you make some kind of samples so that let's, let's, what could come out? So in this case, the idea of creating an open space, in a way, uh, I'm thinking of the Piazza San Gimignano. It's a joke, of course, but just to say the Italians maybe are good in doing concave space. To me, the project is more this than this, but also the textual quality of things can make city. This is a park in San Donato de Piave. And this is the one I put for Emilio. It's just a temporary setup for the gallery in Lugano. There's a new gallery here, and for five years, we just, this is a temporary entrance. So they say, can you make just, now this is was just done when the, the, the grass is not there. So basically, it's just a very, very cheap, uh, almost cinematic sculpture, which is very liked by the people in Lugano, who screens up the temporary works for the highway and blends into the legs. Just to say that, of course, or again in housing, this is a project for Cascina Merlata uh, housing here, a, a very cheap project again. The dimension of the window is this, but when building gets high, you need some kind of relationship between you know, just piling up windows or cells and the scale, you know, when, when you set back. So in housing, this to me is the most difficult thing. It's much more difficult to do a housing high building than an office one, which is closer to design. You have to mediate between intimacy and scale far away. And to finish up, I'm just going very quickly with two, say, urban design uh, projects. One is the Portelli Milano. And then I took some of these pictures that are taken by me, side by Giovanna Silva. When we did um, a setup in the Biennale, I, I just went around Milano and we picture plain Milanese facades, like with fabrics. You know, so can, do you have some kind of lexicon? Of, these are just buildings from Milano from the 50s. And can you do a new architecture with all this idea of inhabitable space? You know, this is quite, it's conventional housing, so it's quite a cheap one, but still with some quality where, again, you respond to the need, but you also respond to the city. With a little bit of picturesqueness, I think. This is the typical post-war Milanese housing that we like. And just to say that Joe Ponti was saying, when you take the window flash to the facade, you don't have any more the void and the surface. He says architecture is a crystal which reflects the sky. So this idea of, you know, Joe Ponti in a way, just putting the window flash in the Bonte Capitini building, uh, really was talking about this, this idea of surface. And to end it up, this was a project in Venice. It was a, the Jungans factory watch. We did a master plan and the black buildings. Just to say that Venice is an untouchable city, but it's also it's like a big texture. So uh, can you do infill building? This is a new building, but if you this is, was an existing industrial building which was modified, a new building. I mean, to touch Venice with modern architecture is almost a sin. So we felt all the responsibility to do that. It's very unusual that you do that. So we wanted to be contemporary architecture, but somehow we did not feel the right. This is not contextualism. It's quite contextual. It's just to imitate a little bit what's around. It's to be contemporary, but somehow to pick up, in this case, the textual quality of the existing one. In this case, the white edges of the windows. So today we have a lot of talk about landscape, 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 but maybe we don't have to forget that landscape has faces. I, I'm at the generation train up with typology, you know, typology, typology, typology. But in a way, in a way we rediscover the issue of character. You know, you have the type, but you also have to give character to building. So I found this drawing by Kuzeiskel, the game of a thousand faces. Can you make faces with buildings in a way? And you know, these bad American scientists that try to torture this poor soul try to, to make a checkerboard. So I find, in a way, we did the reverse. This is the typical Judecca housing, historical one. We tried to make something which was contemporary, but something if you squint your eye, you can't see it. And of course, the paradox with Venice is that is 
the place where you have more, um, let's say, uh, is the most artificial city in the world, but is like just a big natural piece. Can we, we have a paradox. We feel Venice as both the most artificial place and the most natural one. So can you really solve buildings into the landscape somehow? Can, can buildings go back to the stature of naturality we feel in old settlements? And you know, Walter Benjamin is saying, you know, in, in the middle of the last century, when will be the moment where technology that we feel somehow took us into another place will reveal what belongs to nature? When we will perceive the forms of technology as natural forms? It's it's a drama in a way, you know, something, the confrontation between you know, technology and modernity and this natural feeling we expect from our environment. So, Paul Valéry wrote an essay called The Man and the Shell. And he said, when we look at the shell, we pick it up on the, on the sand and we look at it as almost as being man-made. Then, you know, there's something which interests us. We, we look at the mystery, but there's something which, which looks, you know, this, this idea of the shell, think of all this diagram of the Nautilus, of the great engineers. To, can we do something as nature? And some American scientists finally found a program, you can download it, which generate exactly the same patterns as this Olivia Porphyria. This is a, a computer program. And they made a team which has biological people, People, and they discover how these patterns are made, the ways of inhibition of pigments. So they found out the algorithm of this decoration. So these are the real shells, and these are the ones who they're doing in computer. Okay? Basically, if you do give a parameter to the spiral, how fast, you can build out of a computer today any kind of shell, and even this kind of almost random decoration, which means today with a computer we are touching the deepest dream of Leonardo da Vinci. In a way, Pixar, a Pixar movie is touching this naturality. We, we're connecting mathematics to naturality. So we are on, a, on the verge of discovering the secret of algorithmic beauty, in a way. It's a very dangerous one. But then Paul Valéry was saying, the way a shellfish makes its shell is like an only way. They do it almost like liquid. And he says, we cannot understand it exactly because thought is not necessary in the way the shellfish does the shell. We begin our work and we have a freedom, freedom of matter, freedom of figure, freedom of duration, all things which are forbidden to the shellfish, being which does not know but his own lecture which with his very existence coincides. So man has freedom, the freedom to get it wrong. So I found the shellfish which is closer to the way I work, which is bricolage. I take everything I can uh, from the bottom of the sea. This is called xenophora pallidula, pale carrier of foreigners. I think the, the, word, the name is very poetic. So probably I, we try to work as nature, but I think closer to this shell. So, you know, if the, the, the table of work of the modern movement was somebody in white apron like the engineer, we like more bricoler, if you use the famous Levi-Strauss distinction. But with the certainty that architecture will take it back, uh, back sooner, I mean, nature will take it all back sooner or later. Thank you for your patience.